As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. There's one thing that we can say with a great deal of certainty, and that is narcissists are constantly in a compensation mode. Behind the scenes in their personality, they have lots of unresolved strains and tensions and conflicts. And rather than saying that, I have inner, inner strains and tensions and conflicts, no, they, they, they don't want to have to introspect like that and take responsibility for who they are. That being the case, they look at their interactions with other people as being a competition. And this is whether you're uh, living with that person or if it's someone in your extended family or in a social setting or an organization or at work, wherever it might be. Narcissists are constantly trying to figure out how to make you look like you're the problem so that they can uh, sidestep the responsibility of having to come to terms with their contributions to perhaps some of the difficulties in a relationship. And I want you to be aware of some of the tactics that they use, some of the tricks that they try to, uh, to use to make you look be, uh, like you're a problematic person as a part of them uh, sidestepping their own responsibility for the difficulty they have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through seven different uh, ways, seven different tricks that narcissists like to use with you to make you out to be responsible for them because in their mind, you're such a difficult person. Now, the first trick I want you to be aware of, and as soon as I say this, you're going to nod your head and say, oh yeah, this has happened plenty. And that is narcissists love to bait you into an argument. Now, let's suppose that you have something that uh, that brings out differences of opinions or a conflict in terms of where you're going with a certain project, and that being the case, preferences or needs or opinions are expressed. Okay, okay, so far so good. We do need to put our thoughts and feelings out of, uh, along with, with those subjects. But then as you share your thoughts, your feelings, your needs, your preferences, here come the criticisms. Rather than the narcissist saying, well, let me think this thing through and let's understand why you feel as you do, what they do is they invalidate and they tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. And they start becoming argumentative and then you bite. And when you by that, I mean, you start arguing right back and you tell them how difficult they're being. And then you talk about how, no, 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 they don't understand. And they're over there with this real satisfied feeling that says, got you going, look how dysregulated you are right now. How in the world am I going to interact with somebody who's as problematic as you? And that's one of their favorite tricks that they like to use. Uh, the more you argue with them, the more it proves in their mind, you're unstable, aren't you? Uh, it's, it's one of their favorite tricks. Or a second trick that they use to uh, make you look like a problem is that they insist that you really do have to justify your feelings or your actions or your interpretations. And so let's say that you're talking about whether it's a project or an opinion or a preference that you have or a feeling or an, uh, an impression that you have. Uh, it's like, well, why do you feel that way? Where did you come up with that? And who would think in such a way? Or what are you hoping to accomplish? And before you know it, you're going into this high justification mode. And I'm one of these people that says, I'll explain myself once. But the narcissist, as you explain yourself, it's like, well, keep explaining. Keep telling me that because that's not adequate enough. And the more you go into your justification and rationalization, they're constantly trying to figure out how to poke holes in whatever it is you're saying. And the, the deeper you go into that, it's like, see, uh, every time you say something, it doesn't make any sense. And you have to stop and ask yourself, do I really have to justify myself that strongly, particularly when it's with somebody who isn't paying much attention to what I'm saying anyway? A third tactic that they like to use, a third trick is they'll, they'll try to shame you for your independent thinking. Now, let's just pause on that. 
is it okay for you to have independent thoughts? And the answer is, well, of course. Each one of us is distinct, but they can say, a narcissist might say something like, well, you just have to do things your way, don't you? And it's like, yeah, that's called me being me. Or where did you learn to think like that? Or, uh, well, I guess you don't have any use for anybody else's thoughts now, do you? And so when you say, well, I have my own preference or I have my own style or my uh, uh, way of doing things, in other words, I like to be my own independent agent, somehow uh, that's your way of saying uh, they interpret that as you're leaving them behind. You consider them to be insignificant when, in fact, all you're trying to do is to say, no, it's just me being me. But you're going to be shamed for uh, for something like that and in the hopes that you'll eventually stop that and go along with their program and quit being the problem. That's the way they operate. Or a, a fourth uh, a tactic or trick that they like to use to make you look like the problem, uh, and that is they try to make you feel responsible for their moods. For example, let's suppose they, they are feeling agitated or irritable or they are feeling perplexed. And they may something, say something like, do you realize how much trouble you create around here? Or I was having a perfectly good day until you showed up or uh, you better believe that I'm upset and you're just such an impossible person. And so they have their own moodiness and their uh, irregularities. And then they'll turn around and say, yeah, and it's all your fault. And of course, if you accept that and if it's like, well, I didn't mean that or... Uh, They've got you going. Again, that's part of their game. Or a fifth uh, way that they can uh, trick you into looking like you're the problem is they may actually offer lame excuses. Uh, for example, let's suppose that they have made a mistake or they, they realize that, you know, they were pretty, uh, um, pretty moody or pretty erratic and they may say something like, yeah, I've been under a lot of stress lately, or I didn't have a good night of sleep, or I was waiting for this person to finish and they didn't come through. So they make lame excuses, and then they blame you for whatever kind of reactions you have. For example, they may say something like, yeah, I've been uh, working on this project for such a long time, and, and I know that I'm kind of raw, but you're so difficult whenever these kind of things come along and right, they'll judge you for not understanding them. Or they may say, hey, you didn't make matters any better because you weren't, certainly weren't available when I needed your help. And so uh, rather than just saying, yes, I have a problem and they accept responsibility, along with their excuse comes that one pivotal word, but, yeah, I, I know I have a problem, but you. And so they make it all your fault. Or a sixth uh, way or trick that they use to make you look like you're problematic is they'll actually try to intimidate you uh, when you try to have boundaries. For, uh, keep in mind, boundaries is your way of saying, this is who I am, this is where I plan to go, and sticking with your uh, decisions. And so they may, uh, uh, the intimidation is, well, I'll tell you what, if you want to do something like that, you're just going to ruin everything for everybody else. You're just a selfish person or you're definitely not a team player. And they'll uh, they'll try to uh, make you think that having boundaries is a bad thing when in fact, no, it just means I have a definition of myself. No, it's a bad thing. It just means you're uh, a very disruptive kind of force around here. And then a seventh trick that I uh, put down here, uh, and, and this is one that... Uh, in, in this modern day and age with the word narcissism being so, you know, white hot, uh, they'll actually accuse you of being a narcissist. Uh, they'll say, well, you know what? Uh, I've been reading up on this whole thing about narcissism and you're a narcissist. You're, you're just terrible because see to them, narcissism or being a narcissist is just a dirty name that you uh, give to somebody. And it's their classic projection uh, that they're putting on to you. Now, over time, as these narcissistic individuals uh, come up with these different tricks to make, try to make you look problematic, they have one end game, and that is they want to wear you down. So eventually, uh, you'll be, you'll start thinking, you know, just forget it. I don't want to argue with you. Uh, why should I bother? It's not worth the effort for me to try to uh, take my own initiatives. And they're thinking, good. Uh, that means I win, you lose. And then if that does indeed happen, you wind up losing yourself, 
You wind up becoming a person that you don't particularly like. For example, you, uh, you may uh, have a lot of dysregulated emotions like anger and agitation. You suppress a lot of what you really feel. Uh, you can become uh, susceptible to anxiety or depression. Uh, maybe you just withdraw from other individuals and you can just become generally negative and cynical. I've talked to so many people uh, in the aftermath of having been with a narcissist who said, man, I don't even like the person I was with that individual. That's what they're trying to do. See, let's keep in mind all of these uh, uh, ploys that I'm talking with you about, it's it's their form of gaslighting. Uh, and basically, it's their way of trying to say the more indecisive I can make you, the more I can strip you of my confidence, then somehow that makes me a better person. But ultimately, I'm hoping you can see that the reason narcissists use these types of tactics and tricks on you is they have to have an adversary. And I, I want you to think, you know, what's going on with somebody that has to have an adversary? And basically what it tells me is these are people who are adversarial within themselves. They have all sorts of strains and tensions and conflicts that they themselves have not come to terms with. So they project their problems onto you. And every time they say something like you're stupid or you're worthless or you're inept or you're a contrarian, they're actually giving a, a, a backwards confession about who they are. It's, these are the things that they fear. It, it's their projections onto you. So I'm hoping that you can become a, a very aware of some of the common tricks and tactics uh, narcissists try to use to make you look like you're the problem. And it really does uh, underscore why it's so necessary for you to say, you know, I need to have my own sense of self, uh, self-esteem self and my dignity, my respect, my civility intact, because I know that uh, that's something that the, the narcissist is going to try to disrupt. And then when they come at you with these tricks of theirs, uh, I'm hoping you can see it in advance and know this is time for me to go bland. I'm not going to go in there and, and uh, play the game with them. It's called gray rock. I'm pulling back. Uh, I'm going to give myself permission to be me. And if they don't understand me, they didn't want to understand me in the first place. I hope that videos such as this can give you some good insight about what you're dealing with. Uh, knowledge is power. And, uh, and so I'm hoping that, uh, you can really feel um, emboldened as you understand these kind of things. If you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button. Some more videos can come in your direction. Uh, if you've uh, not, if you have a need, uh, we have a sponsor that can help you out with uh, online therapy. And I know that in this day and age, that's something that's very common. It's very popular. And uh, below the video here is a link that will take you to our sponsor uh, who can uh, uh, take you to a team that you get to choose from of therapists that can assist you. And so if that's a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to look into that. Also, I've put together courses. I have a new one now. It's called Ready, Set, Connect. It's all about uh, establishing relationships in a healthy direction. Uh, also, we have This Is Me about es establishing boundaries and then uh, uh, Free to Be, Finding Yourself Despite the Controllers. And so, and, and these are very extensive. There are multiple uh, lessons inside uh, with, with a video and written material inside each module that's inside the course. So uh, quite a bit of work that would uh, be required of you, but it's there for a thera therapeutic purpose. So I would encourage you to avail yourself to that. We also have my books and other resources. Like I say, narcissists are in a competition and they want to draw you in with these various tricks, but I'm hoping you can be onto them and say, you know, uh, that's not the way I do things. I'm comfortable with who I am. And if they don't like it, well, I'm still comfortable with who I am anyway. I'm hoping you can think like that and you can live as a person of steadiness and you can be somebody that lives also inside the peace that that allows you to, uh, to find and live in.